Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in here with team number 6328 at the first championship here in Houston. This open alliance juggernaut has built an incredible robot this year with an even more incredible design process. So much to learn about with an incredible full width intake that really sucks up the core well. A slanted elevator, just really incredible robot. District event win under your guys' belt here. To learn more, we had Advey, Matthew, and Surya. Let's find out more up behind the bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Kettering University's cutting-edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, feature-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. All right, Advaith, why don't you get us started talking about the design process, the mechanical advantage used, and then your robot. Yeah, absolutely. So every day we all wake up and we know as a team we deserve absolutely nothing. Everything we want and everything we have, we have to work for it every single day. And that starts the second the game drops. So when the game's released, all our team, we get into groups and the first thing we do, we understand the game. How can you score? Where can you score? What are all the possible things we can do? And then in our groups, we think strategically about our ability as a team, how much work we're gonna put in, and we decide um, what kind of objectives we wanna fulfill and what we think our role is gonna be on the field. Um, and so we start off by doing that and then we go through all the rules, understand all the rule book, all the rule changes, you know, different weight limit, different field dimensions, uh, how we score, everything like that. Uh, and then we start brainstorming prototypes in our groups. You know, we could prototype different ways to score the coral, score the algae, pick it up to, uh, you know, elevator. We gotta test everything out make sure we got the right stuff going on the competition robot. And the way we do that is with our dev bot or development bot. Um, it's different from like an alpha bot because it's a little higher fidelity. Um, you know, we have full thorough subsystems on it. We get our prototypes high fidelity um, so we can actually like run real practice with the robot. Um, so on our dev bot, we had like a very similar elevator here tilted. Uh, we had a hopper on that, which I'll talk about how our revision process went for that to the ground intake. Um, we had a completely different end effector, but we were able to learn about the game and how we can tune everything in for the competition robot and make it really good. Yeah. Insightful. Um, so can we start to talk about kind of the intake? How did you guys come up with that? And it really works quite well. Matthew? Yeah, so new for this event is our full width ground intake. So originally for our first three events, we had a large hopper in the back, but then coming in the champs, we knew we needed to improve and the best way we could find was uh, to have a full width intake. So on the back here, we have a full width intake. We have, on the front here, we have uh, star wheels on rollers. And then on the bottom, we have just straight tubes. And on this two inch roller, we have a, a foam. So that enables the, the coral to smoothly go up and over the, the bumper. And then once it gets there, uh, there's these large flaps that then center it going into the indexer. And then the indexer then brings it into the end effect. Uh, which, uh, and now I'll give a little demo. So a big priority for the intake was being super quick and not have to work very like touch and own it and not have to worry about chasing around the coral around the fields. Yeah, so I'll start off by just saying the reason we transitioned from a hopper to the intake is because we, we realized quickly that we kind of hit our ceiling with the hopper at our district championship and we really wanted to get that coral faster because we didn't want that to be our limiting, our limiting factor in our scoring abilities. So uh, that's why the intake is so fast is we learned over time with our revisions that we initially thought we wanted a lot of torque on the intake and the indexer, but we we then realized it's better to just go with as fast as possible, and that's why the coral really flies through. And so on the indexer, um, we have a really wide first stage, so the coral can come in in kind of any orientation, but the flaps that Matthew just talked about do a lot to center it, and then the rest of the wheels just direct it straight into our end effector. Um, so now onto that. We've actually had this end effector since our second district event, um, and we made a lot of improvements from our first revision. It holds onto the coral better. Um, we're able to get into a nice scoring position for each level. Um, and also we have a really cool algae, uh, algae part of the end effector. So not only does it hold onto the algae well and barge it well, but it can pick up from the ground 
when we put it, the elevator and the wrist in a certain position. Um, we initially looked like we were chasing a ping pong ball in the frat house basement, but with some <laughs> adjustments like four inch wheels, you know, we can pick up the algae pretty well off the ground and barge it or process it. Uh, Let me see what that looks like. That? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, so yeah, as you can see, we can also hold a coral and an algae at the same time. Um, another cool thing about our end effector is we have this little tongue or fang that we call, we call it. And what it allows us to do is we had an issue hard stopping the coral with our fast intake and ind indexer. It was, we had to slow it down artificially just to keep it in the end effector. And we were pretty unhappy with that. So we looked into ways we could stop the coral without adding too much because we didn't have weight or bandwidth to like do a whole new real mechanism. So this is just a cool little thing that can slip on the same shaft as the algae and end effector rollers. Um, and so they just roll with the rollers, but once it hits a coral, the, the, the wheels can still slip on it and it doesn't cause any issues. Um, yeah. Can we talk about your climber too? Very quick engagement, works pretty well for you guys. How yeah. do you iterate on that throughout the season and how is it working so well? Yeah, so our first climber iteration was more similar to like the EveryBot climber with the little elastic pieces that would um, force itself into the cage and then we pulled on it with the hopper. And that worked really well in terms of the actual climbing motion, but we realized we wanted a faster acquisition of the cage. So we wanted to go with more touch it, own it uh, type climber. So we basically copied 2910s um, with a lot of you know uh, adjustments to work with our architecture. Uh, so we have like a similar system with the lever arm and the wheels to intake that one pole of the cage um, and we got like fangs here to keep the cage contained and these latches um, and we've gone through a lot of revisions of the latches to make sure we keep the cage engaged um, with the climber even when we pull um, and we have a spool that can that gets caught on a latch once we climb to keep the robot up uh, after the three seconds when our robot's disabled um, so yeah Thank you, Advey. Very, very insightful. And yeah, yeah. you know, your team name is Mechanical Advantage, but yeah. I think someone say you guys have a software advantage, oh. right? So I'd like to talk over here with uh, with Syria. Tell me a little bit more about uh, the software, this robot, how you guys controlling it. Right. So most of our automation starts with our cameras. So for this year, we've totally revamped our vision solution. Um, just starting with the position or the placement of the cameras, we have two in the front um, here and here, and one in the back here. Um, and so. There's actually quite a bit of strategy that went into early in the season that went to the placement of these cameras. So these two in the front are specifically for the reef tags as they're aligned up to the branch because that was our goal, right, to, to score autonomously on the branch. And so the way we did that was as we're in our scoring positions, we just put the, reef, the able tag where it would be in CAD and then have it so that the view box of each camera would be such that the able tag would be in the center of that view box, right? And then switching over to the, the color camera, we had, we had this such that, uh, actually the way we did this, was we went in an advantage scope and we put the cameras on like generally where we thought it should go and then play with the angles until it seemed like as we're running our autos, it would have like the various view of the coral on the ground, right? This is actually how we tested the advantage scope using an advantage scope. All right, so these cameras are specifically sourced from Bosler, which is a German company. And the way we actually found out about these cameras was we just went into Google and we were like, computer vision. And that's, that's basically how we figured these out, right? So these are made specifically for industrial grade, like robotics, like use cases. So we're kind of using the right products here. And what these are rated, so these two in the front are monochrome Golo shutter and they're rated for 1900 by 1200 at 200 FPS. And on the Mac mini, which is where you can power them, we're able to get about 100 FPS throughout the whole match. And on the back is our color camera, which is a bit lower resolution, I think 980 by 720. Yeah, 980 by 720. And that's also global shutter and in color and does about 50 FPS. Or I, get, I think it's rated for 100 FPS, but we cap it to 55. Right, so as I said before, our vision coprocessor for this year is a Mac Mini M4. And so uh, the brainstorming for that was mostly that the Mac Mini M4 came out last year and we realized it's a smaller form capture than the M2. And it almost, it almost started as a joke, but basically the idea was like, what if we could just put it on a robot, right? Because it's that much smaller that we just had, we had to try. So last last year in November was basically our initial testing where 
we had the Mac Mini off a robot and just testing it, benchmarking it basically yeah. on our old pipeline, which is running the same 1600 by 1200. And at about, we're doing about 25 FPS on Orange Pies, but just through benchmarking, we were able to figure out that we could do about 10 of the same pipeline locked out at 60 FPS, which is what the Arducam offered. Um, so yeah, that was a pretty insane stat line for us, or stat for us to see. And then the first time we put it on a robot and powered it off the robot was in December, um, which is honestly kind of sketch how we did that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was quite a bit of electrical work that had to be done to ensure that it happened. Right. Well, in incredible job, sir. Yeah. You guys are doing incredible. And 6328, mechanical advantage. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's been awesome to follow along in the Open Alliance all season long. But best of luck as you guys search for the fourth time on Einstein uh, here at the World Championships. And uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is James for the Fun Robotics Network, signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Kettering University's cutting edge programs in their experiential co op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands on, feature focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.